Hello. So I recently did a birthday message video and it had a Marvel Avengers theme to it. On the Marvel films, sometimes they have the comic pictures coming down fast. So I wanted to try and recreate that, but using his own pictures. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, I will just show you what that looks like, the original now. So that's what I wanted to try and recreate. Now it doesn't look exactly like that, but I think that it looks pretty good and it's a pretty good replication of it. So as I was creating it, I videoed the whole process and then I created a kind of tutorial that you could try and follow along with and do yourself. So there is a lot to it. So the best thing I suggest is to get your pictures ready, put them into Final Cut Pro and then just follow along and if you want to pause the video just give it a pause so you can catch up and hopefully it's all okay. So anyway, on to the tutorial. Hello there. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I recreated the Marvel intro in Final Cut Pro. So let's get started. So I've already imported my pictures into Final Cut Pro. You want to have at least 20 different pictures for variety. If all of your photos are in portrait, like most of mine are, you will need more, as you will find out in a moment. So I'm just going to select all of my pictures and place them into the timeline. You want each picture to be one second long, so if they're not already, select them all, right click and then change duration and type in one second into the counter. Now because most of these are in portrait, I don't want the black space either side, so I'm going to put three of them together side by side. To do that, choose one of your pictures and then drag the next one above it and the one after below it so you are layering them. The single ones you can see are in landscape, so already cover the screen. Now to get them side by side, go to the first group of three and click the one on top. Then head over to the video inspector in the top right. Grab the X position under transform and pull it down until the picture covers up all the blank bits on the left. You can also rotate it a bit to give it a better effect. Play around with these settings until it looks right. We are then going to do the same with the picture on the bottom of the stack, but drag it to the right instead. What I am also going to do at this point is select all of the pictures and turn the opacity down a little bit to make them blend more. Now I want the pictures to fall down from above, so select all three of the pictures in the stack that we just edited and back in the video inspector, go to the Y position and pull it up until you can no longer see anything. We want this positioning to move down to the original position. To do that we need to keyframe it, so click the yellow box next to position and then move your timeline cursor to the middle of the picture. I know my timeline is in 24 frames per second and each picture is one second long, so I can just move my cursor along 12 frames to find the middle. Then change the Y position number to 0 and it will automatically add in the keyframe. Play the clip and it should fall in from above. We want to add the same effect to all the other pictures. But instead of doing each one separately, you can click the top one you just did and then go to Edit, Copy. Select all the other ones on that row and go to Edit, Paste Attributes. A box will appear. Make sure Transform is selected and hit Paste. You can then do the same thing with the middle row and the bottom row and they should all fall down one after the other. I also just need to keyframe this first picture to fall down as well. Now we want all the pictures to blend without leaving any blank space, so we need to stack them. If I try to move all three, I can't because the middle row is the primary storyline. So select all of the middle ones, right click and then hit lift from storyline. This moves them up, but for some reason they are still in a storyline together, so do the same thing again and it should be fine. Then select all of the bottom row and move it up so they are all stacked again. Now we can begin moving each stack on top of each other. Select the second lot and move them to the middle of the first one. Then move the third lot to the middle of the second, the fourth to the middle of the third, and keep doing this until you have done them all and your timeline looks like a staircase. 
We want these pictures to have that comic book look to them. I could have done this stage at the start, but I didn't, so I'm going to do it now. Select all of your pictures and then go to the effects tab in the bottom right, type in comic and then double click on comic ink and your pictures will have this cool comic book effect. You can play around with these settings in the inspector to give it a more desired look. Now you want to duplicate everything you just did to make it longer. Select all of the pictures, click edit and copy. Find the middle of the last picture and paste. You could also make a compound clip of the original first to make it easier. Keep duplicating them until the whole thing is about 40 seconds long. Then turn everything into a compound clip. To do this, select everything, right click and then hit new compound clip. Ah, doesn't that look neater now? To get the same sound effect, I used the one from the original clip, but you can make your own or find a paper flicking sound online. I then found a point when the paper stops flicking and made a marker by pressing M on my keyboard. Now you want to make the whole compound clip quicker to match the sound. Click on the compound clip and then go to the retime editor and make it faster by 8. You can then drag that little black line so it matches the marker you made on the sound effect. Let's see how that looks. Ok now we need to add the red background so go to titles in the top left and scroll down to generators. In here drag the colour solid option into your timeline above everything and make it the same length. Then go to the inspector and under compositing change the blend mode to multiply. Then go to the far left tab and change the colour to red. So if you've been following this along yours should look similar to this. Now we need to add in the title. So drag a basic title above everything in the timeline and change the text to what you want. You could use one of the Final Cut Pro built-in fonts here but to get it to look more like the original you can install a Marvel font. Let's leave Final Cut Pro for a moment and head over to a website called fontspace.com. Now this site is brilliant for finding different fonts but we are just after one in particular for now. So type in Marvel into the search bar and you should see this one called Marvel Regular. Download this to somewhere on your computer. I'll just download it to my desktop. Now to install a font it is so simple. Double click the download to unzip it and then double click on the font file, click install font and voila! Your computer has a new font. All you need to do to get Final Cut Pro to recognise it is to just quit out of it, open it back up again and if you go to the list of fonts on the title that you added you should see Marvel. Now I have the right font but it's too small so you can drag the size slider up to make it bigger and then readjust the position. You also want to click the all caps box so everything is in capital letters. On the original Marvel intro, the text starts big and zooms into the screen through the pictures, so we can do the same. Go to the start of the clip and then back over to the video inspector and go to the scale all slider. Drag this to the top, but it still needs to be a bit bigger so you can click and hold the number and pull up to increase the number further or you can just type in a number. I'm going to go with 2000%. In order to make the text gradually get smaller, we need to use keyframes, so hit the yellow diamond to the right of the scale all slider and then move the playhead to somewhere near the end of the clip. Go back to scale and type 100 into the box to return it to the original size of 100%. It will automatically place a new keyframe. Now we want the text to fade in at the same time, so go to the start of the clip again, then back to the inspector and click the keyframe button next to opacity. Drag this slider to zero. Then move the playhead to somewhere just before the middle of the clip and pull the opacity back to 100%. Again the keyframe should automatically be added. And this is starting to look good but we also want the pictures to fade out so move the playhead to a position near the end of the compound clip containing the pictures. Click the keyframe button next to opacity, go to the end of the pictures and drag opacity down to zero. And now we need to make everything blend together. This is going to get a bit more complicated now but follow along and pause the video if you need to. So first click on the title compound clip, go to where it says blend mode in the inspector, click on normal and change it to stencil alpha. 
Then we want to make a duplicate copy of both the picture compound and the title compound. The easiest way to do that is by holding Alt and dragging the clip up or down at the same time. This should create a duplicate. Make sure they are all in line with each other. Then select one title compound and one picture compound and create a new compound clip from them. You should have just three compound clips all together now. Then click on the original title compound clip and turn the blend mode back to normal and drag the start of the clip to the halfway point so it starts halfway in. Then create a fade in for this clip. Let's see how that looks. So if you have been following along with this then yours should look something like this. Now we want to give the red background a vignette effect. To do this, click on the colour shield in the timeline, go to effects and type in vignette into the search bar. When you see it, double click the effect and it should be added to the clip. Go to the inspector and play around with the settings. You want the fall off to be quite low. Now move the playhead in the timeline to a position just after the picture's finish and click the keyframe button next to fall off. Play the clip for a couple of seconds and then move the fall off slider down until it just covers the text. I also don't want the background to be completely black, so I'm just going to move the darken slider down just a tad. To get the red circle in a better position, click on it in the viewer and reposition it so it is centre with the text. As the text stops moving, the red circle doesn't completely cover it, so I'm just going to move the fall off down a bit at this point. Make sure the keyframe is being automatically added. It should now look something like this. I wanted to add the word studios with lines appearing as in the original, but I couldn't find any title plugin with that effect, so I created my own. It was a bit of a faff, as you will see. So I went down to generators and used this one called Beam, and dragged it down onto my timeline where I wanted it to appear. I went to the video inspector and on the very left tab, under publish parameters, I turned the glow all the way down. I then cropped it left and right so that it was the same length as the writing. Now you need the length of the red beam to get smaller as the writing gets smaller. So make sure you're at the start of it and now you need to hit the keyframe button for the left and right crop, the scale all and the positioning of the beam which is found under publish parameters. Then find the point at which the writing stops moving and then reposition the beam and crop it again to make it stay the same as the word above. Now to give us a fade in effect, go back to publish parameters, go in a few frames from the beginning and make a keyframe next to size. Then go back to the start of it and pull the size all the way down, making sure it automatically adds the keyframe. Next you need to create a duplicate. So whilst holding the alt key, drag the beam generator down and you should now see two of them. Make sure they are lined up the same. Then on the new one you just created, Go to the point where you made the second position keyframe and move it down, like this. I also faded out the saturation using keyframes. Now it is time to add in the writing. So pull a basic title below the beam generators and type in what you want it to say. Remember to change the font to Marvel and to turn on all caps. Now we need it to move with everything else, so find a point at which everything stops moving and reposition the text to fit between the lines. Head up to the video inspector and pull the tracking slider up so that the word stretches out to fit better. You may have to play around with the size and the tracking to get it right. I also had to reposition the bottom line to fit better. Play around with the settings until you feel it looks right. Now for more keyframes. Go to the start of the text and turn on the keyframe for scale all. Make sure all three of the scale sliders have the yellow box next to them. Then find the point at which the lines have fully opened and then use the X and Y scale sliders to reposition the text inside them. Play it back and it should look like this. Now we want the text to appear as the lines are opening up. I don't know if there is an easier way to do this, but I did it by using the shape mask. So go to effects and type in mask and drag the shape mask onto your title. Make the mask thinner by dragging the top green dot down 
and then position the whole mask so it is just above the text. You shouldn't be able to see the smaller text at this point. Now in the video inspector, find the shape mask effect and turn on the keyframe next to position. Play the clip for a few frames and then drag the mask down so that the writing appears. Play it all back and it should appear like this. Now everything is done, we just need to create a fade out. Select everything and turn it all into a compound clip by right clicking and then new compound clip or you can simply press alt and g. You can cut the clip shorter so it finishes just after it stops moving and then keyframe out the opacity and then you are done. I also included a clip of Nick Fury speaking just for added effect. And here is the final result. You think you're the only superhero in the world? You become part of a bigger universe. You just don't know it yet. Well, thanks for watching. If you found this tutorial helpful, then hit the like button. It really does help me out a lot and it shows me if I should continue to create content like this. Or even better still, leave a comment to let me know what you thought. Any feedbacks, greatly appreciated. If you have created your own video using this uh, tutorial or something similar, I would love to see it. So leave a link in the comments and I will be sure to check that out. If you want to check out more videos like this um, based around filmmaking, then hit the subscribe button and you'll be able to see more videos that I upload. So again, thanks so much for watching and I will see you again in the next video. Goodbye.